Hello everyone, welcome again to Ibridge Accounts and today we're just going to proceed with our, new, with our standard I2 inventory, all right? International accounting standard number two inventory. Now, as we said earlier in the previous video, we said that inventory is measured at the lower of cost in materializable value. Now, how do we determine that cost? Determining the cost of inventory. I'm just going to take a look at this. Actually, previously, we took a look at the cost components. And now we're just going to take a look on how to determine cost. Now, the question to ask ourselves is, are items of inventory not interchangeable or are they interchangeable? So to know the method to use, I should ask yourself these two questions. If they are not interchangeable, of course, if they are interchangeable, you use a C4 or Avico. IS2 inventory allows only for C4 or Avico for interchangeable items. LIFO is not allowed. So we will look later on people and Africa. But let's go. If they are not interchangeable, first of all, what does it mean by saying interchangeable? By saying interchangeable is that you can swap the units without knowing. You cannot distinguish them. They are not distinguishable. But if you say that they are not interchangeable is when you switch them, when you change them, you, re you, you directly realize the difference. So by saying not interchangeable, that means if you change the item, actually you'll be able to differentiate. But interchangeable means that the items are not differentiated. You cannot differentiate the item. So by not interchangeable means that you can differentiate the item. You cannot this is item A and this is item B. So let's start. What if the items are non-interchangeable? That is, if you can differentiate them. That is, if you can differentiate them, right? All right, so we ask yourself here. Cost should be assigned by specific identification. In case you can differentiate the item, then each item should be identified specifically. So by specific identification of individual items that are not ordinarily interchangeable. Not interchangeable means not identical or not very similar so that they can directly see the difference, all right? So that's what we do. However, it is known that uh, calculating the individual item Cost on individual item basis have uh, become very, very difficult because it is one rush. It is one rush means that it is a win lose situation. You can go, you can utilize a lot of energy in doing something that actually just favors one side. And so, uh, to simplify these matters, I still allow for cost estimation techniques, which could be standard cost method or retail method, as long as. This approximation resembles actual costs, right? Yeah, so this is what we do. So let's take a look at the standard cost and then the retail method. Now, as for the standard cost method, you know, the as for the standard cost, the cost of the item is established at the beginning of the period, but also it, it is subject to continuous revision, so as to resemble actual costs. So standard cost considers normal levels of materials, labor, efficiency and capacity utilization. Simply speaking, you will consider materials, labor, and overhead, both variable and fixed. All right? And then you would have to make the regular review and revision to resemble what to post. Because at the beginning of the period, you might deem the cost to be something, but as the period progresses, that view might change. So you would change so as to resemble actual costs. And then we have this one called retail method. By the retail method, what do we mean? By the retail method, we say that it is useful in the retail industry for inventories of large numbers of rapidly changing items. Presume that you have a large number of rapidly changing items. It will be difficult to deal with one item after another on an individual basis. So in case those items have similar margins, by similar margins, we mean that the profit margin is the same. Let's say for each product, I add a 20% profit margin. So it's easy because I can just take my sales value because I have sold the item. I just take the sales value and I, I, I less the, the gross profit margin. Sales minus profit remain with cost. So I can really know uh, the, the unit that I have sold. I can really know the cost of the unit that I have sold. By knowing the cost of the unit that I have sold, it can help me to even determine the closing inventory, right? Uh, yeah. Because I have known the inventory that we are in opening inventory, and then uh, that I purchased, 
and then I could know I could I could take the opening plus purchases, then I could less this unit sold, this cost of unit sold, so as to remain in the closing example. So it's also very, very possible. All right. And then I uh, have this second option, as I told you here earlier. I said that items cannot be interchangeable, but they can be interchangeable. Now let's go for interchangeable items. If you speak of interchangeable items, we mean that items cannot be differentiated. You cannot differentiate between one item and another, all right? So for a large number of interchangeable items, which items which are identical or very similar, it is virtually impossible to determine the cost on an individual item bed. It becomes difficult again. And so I still allowed for the following cost information techniques. We have people which mean test in, test out, but also we have weighted average cost method. What do I mean by FIFO? If you say FIFO, that means the inventory that is received first will be the inventory that will be issued first. By being issued, that means it will be taken out. It's either if you are selling, it will be sold first. If you have materials for making products, then the material will be used first. So it just really depends on the scenario. That's why I, by saying first in, first out, we, we assume that components are used in the order in which they are received. That means the first to be received is the first to be used. All right? That's why you say the components issued are deemed to have formed part of the order's concernment, still unused and are, and are cost accordingly, right? First in, first out. That means the item that I received the last will be the item that will form part of the closing inventory. And then we have the weighted average cost method. Don't worry, we'll just take a look at the examples of this. As for the weighted average cost method, what do I mean? By the weighted average cost method, you know, I can have bought goods for different costs, for different costs, but when when I issue them, I presume that I issue them at an average cost. I take the average of the costs. So each component in inventory is assumed to have been purchased at the average price. That's what you use. That's why you say weighted average. Average price of all components of inventory. Now, when using the weighted average method, as you will see in examples, we say the calculation of average price is made after each purchase, regardless of whether you are using the perpetual system or periodic system. All right, we'll take a look at perpetual and the periodic system. So whenever you obtain a new inventory, you have to compute the average cost so that when you issue, you know the average cost that for which we issue the inventory. All right, we say the same technique should be used by the entity for all inventories that are of a similar nature and use. Just like that. Now, let's distinguish between perpetual and the periodic inventory. Perpetual, or in other words, continuous weighted average cost. What do we mean by this? By this, we just mean that whenever, whenever you purchase inventory, whenever you receive inventory, you have to compute the average cost. That's why you say, the revised average cost per unit is calculated just after each purchase. This is our point. Just after each purchase, you do not wait. Just after each purchase of goods. Whenever you purchase goods, you, record, you, you recompute the average cost. And the cost of any subsequent sales are then accounted for at that weighted average cost per unit. So whenever you make an issue, you consider that. Don't worry, this is very simple when we do an example. All right? And then you have the periodic weighted average cost. Periodic means that you can buy goods, but you, you are not required to compute the average cost. Let's say you can be doing that after a week, after a month, but usually you can just compute it after a whole period. So we say that the average cost per unit is calculated based upon the cost of opening inventory, what we have opened with, plus the cost of the all the purchases made during the accounting period. So you just fix a period, maybe after a month, after each month, I'll be computing the average cost after each month or after a whole period, all right? So it is calculated at the end of the accounting period. This is just an example, but not necessarily good say after a month when the total quantity and the cost of purchases for the period are known, right? Now you have not this. I still specifically say that LIFO last in first out formula is not permitted. So you could never use LIFO in IS2 inventory. 
As for management accounting, you know, this is financial reporting, financial accounting. As for management accounting purpose, because that is for internal use, you can use the lead for. But here, as two is for external reporting purpose, so it's not allowed. All right? Now, I don't worry. We'll come and take a look at advantages of weighted average as well as disadvantages. So, as for now, you shouldn't worry about this. Now, in the next video, I'll explain the advantages and disadvantages of the weighted average method as well as the people method. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe for regular updates. And then until next time.